Grace is one of the most used and abused words in Christendom. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but not I. Christ lives in me. The life that I now live in this flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2 verse 20. So those who say, because of grace, we can sin. They don't understand grace. They don't understand grace. Grace is never a license for sin. For he who has died has now become freed from sin. So if we have been freed from sin, what grace helps us to do then is to remain free from sin. So what is grace? They say grace is unmerited favor. None of us deserved the salvation and the redemption that we have. None of us deserved it. It was grace. There are three precious things that God gave us. Starting with his love, the second one is grace. For by grace are ye saved through faith. The third one is mercy. So grace is the unmerited favor of God whereby God looks at a sinner and says to the sinner, sinner, not guilty. Why? Because the sinner believed and accepted Jesus as his Lord. We are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Another definition, you can look at grace as the foundation, the very ground on which we stand before God. So grace in the Old Testament is always associated with something called favor. So what is grace to you? Whatever the Lord calls you to do, he gives you grace to do it. Whenever we have issues that we are unable to deal with, it tells us that we need grace in that area. It says, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. So whenever we have weakness, human weakness, what, what do we need? We need to depend on the grace of God. We cannot depend on ourselves. The arm of flesh will fail. So we depend on grace. We depend on grace. Even when you know it, live what you know. Trust grace. Because what you know can fail you. That's one of the definitions of grace. The ability of God upon the inability of man. The ability of God upon your inability. That's grace. If it is God that sent you to do that thing, don't, don't let, take no thoughts for where the money will come from. Trust the grace that called you. Trust the grace that sent you. It will make it available. So where we are unable, grace is available. Grace is able and is available. Where we are weak, grace provides strength. Wherever there is weakness, God's strength kicks in. Grace enables us to go beyond the natural limits. Grace also enables us to live holy. Ordinarily, we cannot live holy. You must have heard me say, it's impossible to live the Christian life without the Holy Spirit. So to live holy, ordinarily, would have been impossible. But grace enables us. If you are operating under God's grace, so you cannot be limited. So grace is not only a force. Grace is power. And grace has power. Grace not only has power, grace is also a spirit. Grace is spirit. Grace came to humanity through our Lord Jesus Christ. So there is an entry level of grace. The entry level of grace ushers us into God's family. It is called saving grace. This saving grace that we have enjoyed and that we have received and enjoyed, it came to all men. It appeared to all men. Now, not only did it appear to us, the Bible now says it teaches us. What does it teach us? Teaching us that denying ungodliness. Did you see that? That's why grace can never be licensed to commit sin. It says denying ungodliness and worldly loss, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So grace can never be a license for sin. This grace will teach you to be the best that you can be. Not only does it teach you, it also empowers you. Because it is spirit, grace can stretch and we can grow in grace. So if you are not growing in grace, check your word. Check your word life. Are you studying the word? 
are you meditating on the word because the more you grow in your knowledge of jesus christ you grow in grace we need to note that grace and works are mutually exclusive they can never be combined is it that it is grace and grace alone or it is work and works alone and many frustrate the grace of god by mixing it with works what are you mixing with grace what has god called you to do in life i submit to us that whatever the thing he has called you to do no matter how mighty no matter how big his grace is sufficient <laughs>